<clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. We welcome you guys here, NVIDIA and AMD, to discuss the gaming market. Because it seems like people aren't that interested in what's going on. We just wanted to know what you guys have to combat that. We'll start over with you, NVIDIA. What do you have to say? Like, we, we designed AI and DLSS and ray tracing just for okay. gamers. Okay, okay. AMD, what do, you, what do you have to say about this? AMD, anyone know what's what's up with this guy? Who? What is that? What the heck? Yay, you've chosen Intel Arc. You have joined the blue team. Congratulations. Now that you've installed your graphics card, it's time to get into your drivers. So you know, you just need to open command prompt on your computer and then install the drivers like and you'll be right to it. Why do I do this to myself? It's like, why would you submit yourself to this pain trying a beta product from Intel? Although I didn't do this to myself, Brian did this to me. He let me borrow his Intel art card, but maybe he was just trying to get rid of it. But Loki, like, thank you, Brian, for letting me test your card. Like, this has been a really fun experience so far. When I installed the Arc A770 into my computer. Intel had at least the coolest installer. I'll give them that. You might think that experience that I showed you at the beginning is how it actually is. But I will tell you that was a joke and that performs exactly the same on AMD. Skyrim is just buggy. If you go over 60 FPS, it just breaks. So, because the gaming experience on Arc has been surprisingly good. But I did say that it runs well most of the time and that's because there's two situations where i have no other explanation of these issues happening other than that it's an intel gpu and that was when i was doing some benchmarking in last of us it just randomly crashed and my entire computer went black screen the second situation and i know it's kind of niche but it is also a feature with ray tracing is going into minecraft rt the shame when you put the a770 in it you try to flip on the switch for ray tracing and it always instantly crashes there's no way to run minecraft rt on this gpu unless the resource packs that i was trying to run aren't supported with arc or something maybe there are ones out there that are sadly i don't have footage of this one but a third bonus crash is in resident evil 4 i literally just started the game and it crashed for no apparent reason so it seems like these crashes and issues are just what you're gonna get on the Intel Arc cards compared to the other brands that have a lot more smooth experience. Now at the very least, these weren't game breaking bugs. A simple restart of each game fixed their problems. Whereas in Witcher 3, I saw this happening when I turned on global illumination for the ray tracing, which was pretty odd. Again, not game breaking, but definitely odd things that you're gonna experience on Intel. That's what we need to talk about next is like, yeah, maybe it doesn't crash as much as in games, but how is the performance that you're getting? Now compared to the RX 6700, which goes for actually about $280, compared to the RX A770, the 16 gigabyte model going for about 340 right now, there is a pretty big price difference. And what might surprise you is that the 6700 is usually faster. Although it is really hard to compete with those AMD cards right now, especially as a first generation product, I can give Intel a little bit of slack for at least being near the price to performance of what AMD is offering from the 6000 series. But it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. This A770 definitely has some anomalies that happen every now and then. In general, and because this is a pretty much first generation product ever, this is being built for games that are coming out right now, which means it usually does better in DirectX 12, which is the current version of DirectX that allows you to do ray tracing and stuff like that, rather than in DirectX 11. One of the best games I could test this in is Fortnite. And you can see at the same settings in DirectX 11 and in DirectX 12, 12 performs quite a bit better. And that isn't a bad thing on their part. It's just they have a lot of ground to make up to keep up with the other brands. What about the really old games like the DirectX 9 games that came out in like 2010? I know I memed on it earlier, but this is how it actually performs in Skyrim. As you can see, it's good performance. What I want you to look at is the frame time graph. As you can see, compared to AMD's offering, which is basically like a smooth line. On the Intel side, there's a bunch of like jitters. I will say you can feel that while you're playing. Every now and then there'll be ones that hit even harder, but it's not the same for every game because I hopped into Portal, which is also a DirectX 9 game based on the original Source engine. Portal ran completely fine. 
really no complaints whatsoever. I also checked out another really old game, which is CSGO, and unfortunately, you need to let me know how to do this. I can't find a way to track MSI Afterburner in this game, so unfortunately no FPS counter in the top left, but it performed really well. Like it felt good. It didn't feel any stutters. I didn't, I didn't feel like my FPS was low by any means. It seems like since the launch of these cards in October, Intel has made quite a bit of ground up in those eight months. And they seem to perform pretty consistently in these older games. And one of the benefits of having problems with older games is they are generally easier to run anyways. So usually you're getting at least enough performance to have a good time with it. So even though Intel is still working on this with their art cards, it isn't as big of a problem as many people might like to believe, but it definitely is still a problem and I'd like to see the performance get as good as it possibly can. You know, we got to talk about the ARC A770 itself, Intel's reference design. I just want to say up front, this is a beautiful and well-built card that is super dense like here it is compared to my rtx 3080 and absolute and does perform quite well with the side panel on my case it hits about 78 degrees and i hear you saying like oh that's really high but that's actually not that bad when you consider that the fans are at about 2000 rpm and they're barely audible like i can't hear them over our air conditioning but there's a part of me nagging that i wish intel didn't spend as much time money and design making this card so beautiful and performing well, other than cutting costs on the hardware a little bit to make it more affordable. Because when you compare it to the RX 6700 at $280, and I know this isn't the only option at this price point, but the ARC card is significantly more expensive and it performs worse. I'd also like to see them open up the design a little bit more so that the card can breathe more clearly because do you see this big plastic shroud it's it has to be choking the card at least to some degree and the last thing is like why the hell is this card glued together they didn't use screws so if you want to take it apart it is a pain like you don't want to take apart this card hopefully with their next revision with battle mage they change a few things but I do applaud them for making a very nice premium product. You do feel like you're getting something of quality. Let's get into the real meat and potatoes of this. And that is the ARC control software. Well, my summary of it is, is that it does just what it needs to do and nothing more. So they are focusing on the essentials, right? When you open it up, it is a driver page. It tells you what driver you're on, allows you to send notifications for updates, or it'll automatically install them. And it also asks if you want to do a clean or express install. And I recommend doing clean installs all the time, especially with drivers. It keeps your system running fresh and that the drivers don't overlap on each other accidentally. And then you can change your updates. And if you want to opt into beta drivers, which with a product like this that gets updated frequently, getting beta drivers might not be a bad idea. That's why I really want to point out is it's written all over Intel software that this is a new device. A bunch of ways to contact support. So they already install a program on your computer to hopefully help you with any problems that you most likely are going to have. Also in the settings tab, they offer technical support. And because there isn't that many people on Intel GPUs, there's literally a Discord server if you have problems with the ARC card. I definitely appreciate them not leaving their, their consumers high and dry. But let's move on to what else they have in here. They do have your games. I've never really messed with these menus and any of the other ones in AMDs. It's, it's there as well in NVIDIA's, it's in GeForce Experience. What's very nice is if you go over to the performance tab, you have a few options here. You can do an in-game overlay. Please add that you can see FPS on this graph. This does not show FPS, but a lot of like AMD's Adrenaline, they give you performance tuning. You can limit how much power it consumes. You can do a custom fan curve as well, but for all my testing, I did it on automatic. It's funny is because this isn't a real robust software that works really closely with windows when you go to adjust these things it literally just takes you to windows settings <laughs> but it, it is what it is there and then the last part is basically the recording tab also stream from their software i like this because compared to nvidia geforce experience you can change the video codec what i don't like you can't separate your mic tracks so this is what it looks like recorded on Intel Arc. So that'd be something I'd like to see them add is multiple audio tracks in their capture utility software. But yeah, that's Intel's software. 
and it's pretty good. It does just what it needs to do. They're working on all the back end stuff so that games run as well as they can. Later in time, they could maybe focus more on this ARC control software and maybe give it more features. But right now it's easy to use, it works. There isn't really that much to complain about. So the last thing that typically people use graphics cards for is encoding videos. What's through OBS and I'm actually recording in AV1 currently. But even encoding video on this GPU for whatever reason doesn't always work properly. And I'm gonna show you some examples here. For whatever reason, sometimes at least in using OBS, even though I'm not pushing the encoder to the extreme or anything, every now and then the encoder just gets overloaded. So the only thing that it makes me believe is that this has to be something with Intel's GPUs in general that hopefully can be fixed through software. But I'm not 100% sure. I did want to mention this doesn't happen all the time and it seems to be more likely to happen when the GPU is under really intense load, say maxing out everything. But it also happened to me when I was recording Raft, which isn't a very demanding game anyways. And it doesn't matter what encoder you use, AVC, HEVC, AV1, it doesn't matter. It has to be something wrong with ARC. I don't know how else to explain it. But other than that, my experience editing and recording on this GPU has been pretty good in general. So really nothing to complain about. Like look at the file size when recording on here with AV1 and coding for three and a half hours of footage 21 gigabytes it is awesome okay these encoders are really efficient if they do fix whatever encoder overloading problems there are i think these are going to be probably the best gpus for creators in no time but so I spent some time with the ARC A770 16 gigabyte card and what do I think about it? It's sad to see that at its price class of about $340 for this card in particular, maybe the A750 will be a lot better value. 6700 XT from AMD 12 gigabyte card is just way faster than it so it's really hard to justify going with Intel here. And then on top of that, Intel has a little more rough around the edges with software at the moment. Also wanted to add, I got another crash and I have experience for now. So I was just editing and wasn't doing anything extreme and the whole computer just shut down and I got a blue screen from Windows. I've never gotten that on, on any other product. Like I think what's killing me about the Arc is that it's inconsistent and especially because I'm a decently heavy user on my computer, you can just run into issues like whenever. So on the flip side, and they do offer better ray tracing performance. Like when you turn on ray tracing, your FPS doesn't take as much of a hit on an Intel card compared to an AMD card. Intel does offer a better upscaler called XESS compared to AMD's FSR. But really, if you want a better upscaler and you want better ray tracing performance, you get NVIDIA. And NVIDIA just has way more years of experience making drivers compared to Intel. So it's going to be more stable most of the time. Because even though I enjoy this card, I didn't mind possibly having driver problems or anything like that. Unless you want to just support a third competitor in the GPU market, it's hard to justify getting Intel. Yeah, all we can do is wish to things keep getting better, which it seems like there are, and that hopefully the price on their cards can come down a little bit more because the A750 is really the only value that I see out there right now. The 770 is just too expensive to be justifiable. Pretty good for a showing from Intel, and I'm going to spend 30 days with Intel Arc. Like straight up ripping off a lioness in their Arc challenge, but yeah, spending 30 days with Arc, and I'm gonna report to you when that is over. Let's hope I survive. Just remember, don't go bashing Intel in the comments, man. I got you. So again, at the end here, just a huge shout out to Brian for letting me borrow his ARC A770 16 gigabyte graphics card. And it's crazy to just have a community like this that just does this kind of stuff. So huge shout out to Brian. Hey, say comment, comment below. Brian, you legend. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. I will see you in the next video. I'll see you in those comments saying Brian is a legend. And you guys have a good one. Peace. What are you talk right. Who's talking to me? So I like to look people in the I'm eyes to be respectful. I'm a little nervous right now. Like, seriously, man, why would we give you a mic if you aren't gonna talk like? <laughs> Come on. Just buy a 6000 series, alright? God.